strong Positive mindset A world class foundation For you and me Getting to know Young youths and athletes And talented coaches And so much more Champions in the making No pain, no gain Bringing you levels Bringing you levels to the table Warriors Teaching warriors Welcome to another episode of the Dalton Academy Talk Show. I'm so excited. I am so excited. I'm exhilarated so much. Why? Because I've got a current, yes, a current Olympic champion here today. And for me, it's a passion because it's my event. Yes, it's in the high jump. And they shared a gold medal in the Olympics recently in Tokyo in 1991. That's when Musa... Essa Bazin was born in 1991. And in 1992, same day as my son, one of my sons, the first of June 1992, is this young man's birthday. And it will be. So, leave no further ado. One of the high jumpers now that I, I look up to, I respect his energy and his passion and just the things what he's achieved and you know i'd like to no further ado in, introduce you lot and the world drum rolling Gerardo <laughs> marco tam berry thank you Welcome hi, to the show. hi everyone hi dalton <laughs> nice to hi, see how you. Are you you I'm too fine, as well I'm i had fine. to give you i had to give you that introduction because it's really <laughs> funny i mean when i was a junior i mean you did better than me but in 2000, I think 10 in the World Junior Championships, you didn't really do well, you didn't make the finals. But in 2011, you got a bronze medal. Yeah. And it shows that <laughs> you went on, you know, in your career. And, you know, as a senior, you know, world class jumper, climbing the lab, you won nearly every single major championship medals and gold. Um, and you got the gold, the gold, you know. In Tokyo. So let's go back to when you were young. Who inspired you? Oh, ah, that's a big question. Uh, <laughs> so my big brother, he was a uh, track and field athlete too. He javelin thrower, exactly. And you mm -hmm. always, when you're young, when you have a big, bigger brother, you always look at him and you want to be better than him, let's say. He was a good javelin thrower when I was young and I was trying to follow his way, his path. So every single day I was trying to push myself, saying myself to the mirror, come on, you can do it better than him. You can do, come on, push yourself. And so I would say he is the biggest inspiration when I was in the childhood for the high jump. Then, of course, there are thousands of uh, persons who inspire me through the track and field career. Yeah, great. But what is so great and um, for any um, father, you know, having a son and going in his footsteps. Because I mean, a lot of people didn't know your father, Marco, he was a high jumper himself. And he's also made Olympic finals. So what was it like, the dynamics of now, you know, your father coaching you um, and you going on to proceed and win the gold medal in Olympics? What is that like though, when you first started out and he said, you did, did he encourage you to do high jump, even though you inspired or is that the event you chose? Uh, so let's say he never forced me to do high jump. Probably okay, suggest me more than once because <laughs> I was a basketball <laughs> player in the beginning. I started playing basketball when I was four years old. And then until 17, I didn't want to change because I was in love. I still in love with basketball. But then at okay. 17, I decided that probably I was born for another sport. That's why I chose high jump. And uh, he strongly suggests me every single year probably, but he never forced me to, do, to go to high jump. Then, of course, that's probably my second, maybe not inspiration person, but the second person which I want to beat. I didn't want to be second <laughs> in my eyes. So it's personal that yeah. was 28, 28 and I want uh, with all my heart to beat him as soon as possible because I, I didn't like to be the second of my house. <laughs> <laughs> sounds, it sounds like you got a very competitive house. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So did it your was, mom do uh, sports? 
three. She was a, a track and field too, but a long jumper, okay. not that high level. She was mm -hmm. uh, probably she she didn't reach even six meter. I think five ninety nine something like that. But she was an athlete. My my brother he was a, a good javelin thrower because he, he has the national record under twenty three seventy eight meters. So my father and my brother was were a good athletes, both of them. Brilliant. So what is it like in your house then? If it's so competitive, your brother's got the national record. So did your dad have the national record in, in the high jump many years ago? He had the national indoor record, not the outdoor. In, to 20, so the indoor. To 20, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Just indoor. And the wow. first time I beat him was in 2012 when I jumped 231 and I qualified for the Olympic Games in London. I was 20 years old and that was it's still one of my favorite competition. Of course, not my favorite. You know why? You know which one is my favorite. But yeah. but it was one of my favorite because uh, first time I did a very great step forward. You know, when you qualify yeah. for the Olympics, it's something like, okay, I'm with the big man now. I need to do something. <laughs> and uh, I beat my father in the same competition. So it was a big one in July 2012. Some years yeah, ago. I mean... Yeah, some years ago. I mean, it's great. I mean, I remember for me, it's just the energy jumping with great jumpers. And for me to be a high jumper many years ago and being around like the, the guys like Javier Satomayor, Hollis Conway, Patrick Schoberg, Igor Paklin, you know, just the list goes on. And there's a, a different energy about these competitors because we are friends and at the same yes. time, we are rivals. And I love it. And, yes. you know, sometimes you don't need to be you know, a confident person or extrovert, you speak through the performance. And that's what I like. Yeah. And that's what I love about you with the beard, your energy you bring. And I'm loving it because seeing the high jump now, I mean, we lost our way a few years ago, but to see you, Vazim, you know, um, so many jumpers bring it back to the forefront. I love it because it's like center stage and, and, how do you feel about that, the, the passion and the energy? Because you look more friendly now. Yeah, it's, uh, I think it's, uh, it's really, uh, as you said, I mean, uh, Ignite Jump, we are kind of rivals in the same family. You know, yes. I can compare with my family, with my brother. They push me to go always over my limit, but in the same moment, I respect them 100%. Yeah. Most of them are big friends of mine, as Mutazis, Barshim. We, we have been together since 2010 and we shared so many nice moments i've been in his yeah. wedding with my my footer wife it will be my wedding next year 100 percent. so wow. it's really there, there is this kind of friendship out of the track that make this respect even more higher and then when we are in the track of course both of us we want to win so we try to uh do the best we can as we did in the Olympics. Yeah. Then it happened. Yeah. What it happened in the Olympics, and you just shake the hand and you say, I can't even imagine a better final than what happened in the Olympic Games. Definitely. I mean, Olympic Games was amazing. I mean, for me, I can understand what you're saying because I used to have Hollis Conway. Um, when they came to Europe, they used to be based before they go on the circuit because you was traveling from competition to competition. And a lot of people don't realize it's not against club. Yeah. You're, you're traveling with the best in the world, you know, yeah. day in, day out, coming against the best. And he used to stay at my house, you know, before we went to competitions. And sometimes it was hard because when he was beating me and that, he was staying in my house. But I can see him when he walked up in the morning. But hey, it's not a mm -hmm. problem because it's down to you as an individual. So going to the Olympics and the Olympic spirits, I mean, you've made history. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, that's the Olympics, you know, and it's just yeah. what it stands for. A lot of people see it as it's going to be only one. It should be mm -hmm. out and out one winner. But really, the Olympics doesn't stand only for that. And you and Vazim being friends, and even your injury, what you, what you overcome. So how do you feel about sharing it? How did that come together when, you know, you knew you had the, you had the chance to actually share the, the gold medal? So honestly, uh, I can't find the story which say how it comes, to, uh, how it comes out to share a gold medal because it was just a... Less than one second, and we look at each other. We look just with the with the eyes to eyes, and we we say yes. Like, why not? Like something like that. Yeah. I mean, we both passed through the same injury. It was for me, you know, you know my story. It's been terrible for me because I had an injury yeah. twenty days before the Olympic game in Rio, and uh, 
I've been passing the last five years really frustrating without fear, with the fear uh, that, you know, you probably lost everything in the career because yeah. with that injury, I lost the chance to get the gold medal in Rio when I was in the yeah. best shape ever because I was, in the, I was the first in the world in 2016. So it was really hard to me to get back. And when you're there in that, in that moment that you dream so long, you're, you dream that moment since since you start high jump probably and you yeah. see in front of you your best friend in track that he, he did the same he dreamed that moment since he was yeah. starting the high jump he passed through the same injury he was close to you when you had the, mm. your problem and you were you was close to him when he had his injury you just say why not why why should i uh go 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 and try to uh be the only one to win and the other uh, go out with a cry or Either I could take a silver and I, I would have crying for, for lo lost the, the gold medal. Why should it be like this? If we both had the perfect competition because we didn't miss nothing, we jumped 237 both at the first attempt, we jumped every height at the first attempt, then we both uh, missed 239. So that's high jump, you know you know what I mean? We For that day, our best was 237. We did it both. We did both at the first, so we both deserved the victory. And it, it doesn't make sense to to go just for for what yeah i agree i mean i agree i mean a lot of people don't know you know in other events you can go down and you know in 100 meters and skip it down but in the high jump you jump the same high okay yeah so if exactly. you jump the same high yeah it's the same high so i think you know, there's different you know, rules i i think it's also like it's not nice to finish a competition with going down because the the rules say if you don't want to share, you will go down. So what? Yes. What, what is it? I jump or endurance jump? What? What does it mean? Yeah. We go. We go down. <laughs> we, well, yeah. We, probably somebody would have won with two forty, two 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 thirty four, two thirty two. I don't know. So it doesn't yeah. make sense. We did, we reached the best, the best of the day. We both was in the best condition, and it was the same condition. So that's what a high yeah. jump is. We both jumped to thirty seven. We both deserve that medal. Yeah, I understand that. I wish that the rules changed for me because in 1991, I jumped 236 and came fourth. And like the same height was as a silver medal. The silver medal because um, Charles Austin jumped 238, Sotomayor jumped 236, then Charles, no, Hollis Conroy and then me. So it's the same height, but they do it on count back. And sometimes over the years, the rules change. So the rules are the rules. So if the rule says that you can share it, why not? You still got a gold medal. And no one can take that away from you. And plus, it's a great story. A great story. Yeah, I think it's, it's a really great story because there are there is a big respect from me and big. Barshim. I, I, will, yeah. I, I will be a liar if I say I will have share with everybody in the track. Probably no. with somebody else, yes. With yeah. somebody else, yes, but not with everybody. In that condition, you see at the other, there is this kind of stare in that moment. You look at in the eyes and you know who is the other. You know how much you respect yes. the other jumper. You know how much you love him. You know how many times you see him jumping and you cheer for him. So yes. there is really, it's kind of for two friends that, that can be both happy. And uh, yes. I think it's just normal that you, you, you choose for, for both, not, for, not, not just for you. Brilliant, brilliant. I mean, did he support you through your injury when you hurt? Because obviously, Vazim came through an injury himself because you both had the same journey, didn't you? Yeah, exactly. When I came back from my injury in 2017, I did my first competition in Italy, and then I did the second competition was the Diamond League, first time after the injury in the Diamond League. And I in Paris, I still remember, I did three mistakes and in the enter height, uh, in the first height. So I was really disappointed. You can imagine, 2.15, 3.0, three, three and I yeah. get back in the room. I didn't, I didn't answer to the phone to anybody. My father was trying to knock my door, and I didn't answer. And uh, after, uh, I think, two, three hours, Mutats came in my room. He knocked two, three times, and and I say, who is? And he say, I'm, I'm Mutats. Can I enter? I need to speak to you. And he came inside into my room, and he sit in my bed, and he say, man, you have to understand you are doing right now what you're doing, you are doing for the people. You're not doing for yourself. You have to right. try to understand that you came back. What, all the rehabilitation day, all the training you did, it was just for you to come back. Now you're 
you are like uh, scary to upset people and uh, it's not this way to jump you need to jump for yourself and that's make me think i say wow maybe it's really because i was in this kind of position that uh i felt i need to prove people that i was coming back that yeah. i would be able to jump again and i wasn't jumping for myself and when you jump that's when right. you do whatever you do you have to do for you because you work you you do the rehabilitation every day you train every day you do the diet every single day you sacrifice for that so you need to yeah. do it for you at first and that's opened my mind and the competition after i jumped to 28 so yes uh, and i was i was doing the same with him when he had this injury i was i was with him in 2018 or 7 18 in hungary uh, i saw him he had the same injury of me and uh you know you can imagine one year after my year was like destroying because i was seeing friend one friend of mine having my same my same injury and i knew what it means to have that injury how many days you have to to cry how many nightmares you have to uh to to go through and so i passed all the night with him in his room trying to support him to say come on mutas don't worry I know it's not gonna be easy, but you are the champion. You will be the future record world record holder. And he always he always inspired me so inspired inspired me so much because he's really drawn as the best high jumper, as perfect high jumper. So I'm just I really I couldn't write a better end than what happened in the Olympics no. with him. No, really. I, I'm I mean really that was brilliant because I mean that's true friendship in a time of need using your experience coming from your injury to help him and his it's so true because i've been through um you know many years when i was jumping i was jumping for the people not jumping for myself and i realized that that's when i had to go in there because once you you you, you achieve a certain height and standard you think you have to always go out there and you can put a lot of pressure on yourself i mean yeah. that's why you know when i went in and I, I was speaking to you you know texting that i had an injury and I felt a lot of pressure in the World Championships. And what I did, I came in at two meters 31. That was my first attempt. You know, I came in and nailed it. And it wasn't because of, um, I felt good in that way. It's because I, I felt bad and had an injury. And it's one of those injuries that it limits the amount of jumps that you can take. So, yeah. you know, I thought in my brain, well, you can win the long jump on the first round. You can win the high jump, not the high jump, sorry, the long jump, the first round, triple jump. You can even win on the javelin on the first round. So, hey, so why can't I come in on that first round? So that's what I did. And, you know, I jumped it on my first attempt. I passed the next height, what was 234, and went for 236 and cleared it on my third. But the funny thing about that, I knew I was in good shape. And my best jump that year was 2 meters 28. And I entered the finals in the World Championships at 231. So that's just the energy. And once you understand that you've got a strong mindset, yeah, and this 100%. is what, you know, I see in, in, in you now, the next level, I can see that, you know, yes, you have the ability, your best is 239. I've seen some of your jumps. I've seen the relaxation of your jumps. I've seen that you want that 240 plus so much and you try a bit too hard. All you just need to be is relax and then you will clear it. And that's the experience what I did. I think sometimes it's very hard because each step you, you, you make, the bar goes boom, 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 boom. And yeah. you know, the flight of the bar is different. So do you do in training any, what's the highest um, height do you, do you train at? The best height I clear in training? Yeah, or how uh, high do you go? The highest, the highest bar you ever jumped at? The highest I ever jump in training is 235. Oh, 235, okay. Yeah, yeah. Wow, and yeah, what did, did you clear? I, I did 235 two times in a row, actually in 2016, oh, wow. the week before the injury uh in monaco so i was in the greatest shape ever and uh, yeah. in that moment i was jumping every single training more than 230 but wow i i never tried more than 235 actually because the training that i did 235 twice i asked to my father can i try to for 240 is my coach you know and he said no yes. way you will jump it in, in competition <laughs> come on wow. you will be injured come on come on and then i never tried more than 235. wow because i was saying because my best jump is 228. But what I used to, I used to I call do. names, yeah, because I find it hard to, to jump in training. I like people, competition. 100%. When I see you jump, then I respond. So that 235, me, wow. It's exactly the jumping. same of you, Dalton. It's it just something changed 
when it came to the Olympic moment. I mean, in that yeah. year, in 2016, when I was jumping to 35, was 30 days before the Olympic game. And that every single training for me was like a competition, as it was yeah. this year. In the last month before the Olympic game, I was jumping re really high in training. But if you see, in the last five years, it was terrible. Like yeah. 220, yes. 215, sometime when it really, maybe 225, but it's impossible to jump to 30. Just when you are yes. close to the big event, like your emotion, it comes and uh, I don't know. Comes together. Like every yeah. training is yeah. like a competition. <laughs> yeah. But you know, do you have any other high jumpers that you train with that is good jumpers that push you or not? I'm lucky now. I'm training alone. Right now I'm in wow. training camp. And when I go in training camp, there is another high jumper who comes with me and he, he just do something with me. But when I'm at home, I train alone. Wow. I used to do that as well. I um, got yeah. to, as a trainer alone. Um, I used to train with Colin Jackson, Linfa Christie, Frankie Fredericks used to come. We used to go to Australia. But sometimes when I went to America, Steve Smith, because I'm a few, well, quite a number of years older than him, he came along and we used to do our training together. So I've been to America with Steve Smith and um, to Australia as well. But you know what I said? I was telling you as well that the highest bar that I've attempted in training was two meters 50. So I kind of got up my back, trying to arch up there. So because I always used to use that for my mindset, that's why I could have come in at a high high because I knew that I tried that much. And you know what people don't realize that it's, it's the mindset of elitism. What is the, the mindset of Musa? What is the mindset of Jamal? What is the mindset of Sotomayor? Because we're on a level that not many are. You're doing something that a human's never done before. You know, and this is what people don't really realize. So when we're jumping, it's that 1%, 0 0.0 point, what really would understand and put yourself in that situation. Talk the talk yeah. and walk the walk. And that's what I like about you. So what's going to motivate you now? You know, you won the Olympics with your best friend, you know. Is there anything out there that you'd like to achieve in, in athletics? 100% yes, because right wow. now... I'm, glad, I'm happy <laughs> now. Oh, I need more of your energy. Go ahead. You know, right now, uh, I, I can't say I, I won a lot in my career, but I won something and I missed something that is really big. It's the World Outdoor Championship. And I really want to get it because it's the last big gold medal that I missed. I won the, world, the European Indoor and the European Outdoor, the World Indoor and the Olympics. And I need that World Outdoor to, to have all the yeah. five fingers <laughs> full. <laughs> and then, of course, uh, my yeah. second big goal is to jump over to 42. Uh, is to jump over my injury, let's say, because I had that yes. injury. My PB was 239 that night when I got injury. And I still, even if I won the Olympic Games, I still didn't pass that height. And I the want, height, I yeah. really want with all my heart to say myself, you're better than you was in 2016 because I had, I have so many experience in my back right now. I, I, yeah. I worked a lot and I really sacrificed a lot for this sport. I think I deserve okay. to, to go even higher and uh, I want to be in that wall of 240. Yeah, you deserve to go higher, of course. But I want to know how you're going to handle that. You're Olympic champion with your best friend. You're a celebrity now around the world. Not just you fly the flag for the world, not only Italy. Everybody's owning you. Yeah, you're, you're that entertainment. So you, you did interviews with Snoop Dogg, Kevin Hart. How are you going to keep yourself grounded? And now, like when you uh, said, I, I, how? You know what? I will, I will stop you because for me, uh, I didn't even imagine what would happen if I have won the Olympics because it was just personal. When I had that injury, for me, it was just something personal. My goal, my, my, my career was just to win that gold medal and I never think about what could happen after that. So right now, for me, that's not important. What, what is important is that I have that gold medal that I won, that Olympic, and then I say myself, whatever you put in your dream, you can realize it if you if you do 100% in order to achieve it. So it's something that it, it's okay for me. I mean, I like that people say me, thank you for what you did. I like to see you jumping. I like, of course, I like to have an interview with Snoop Dogg. I love to, to have been, um, to look my name wherever I see, I mean, it's nice, but it's not what I'm interested to. I like to win. I like to do a record. I like to, I, I want to achieve the best I could do in my career. So that's not 
it's not for me the celebrity life. What I what I want is to be the best high jumper for me in, in my career. Wow. Oh, that, that is, I mean, that's wonderful. Um, it's more personal, it's, not... it's something more personal. <laughs> yeah, it is very personal. I mean, I mean, it's funny because I wanted to be a football player, soccer, but high jump chose me as a talent. And that's what I have mad love for. Exactly. But my talent is, you know, high jump. And you've got yeah, mad you know, love for basketball. You... You know, you the basketball, that's yours. You, you touch the point. <laughs> because when I started to do high jump, I was in love for basketball. And I'm still yes. in love for basketball. High jump is the one <laughs> who I have talent for. So yes. the first day I start to do high jump, I say to myself, I want, a bit, I want to improve every single day. Because if I'm doing this, it's to do something big. Because I love something else. If I'm not doing something big, it's better to play basketball. So that pushed me every single day because I want to improve, improve, improve to raise the bar every single day. Because if I don't do it, so it's better I go play basketball because I love basketball. I don't love I jump. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> yeah, do what you love. That's right. <laughs> but yeah. you know, you so, can't complain because what you've done and the, the levels that you've achieved. I'm, I'm not. No, no, I'm not complaining. I mean, I love more the uh, the feeling of the victory. I love more the feeling yes. of to win a competition, to achieve a goal than at the basketball. That's why I'm doing but, it. But if there is you a know, moment where, where I'm not achieving it, so it's better stop. That's why I'm just focused on my goal, not on celebrities yeah. or on interviews or something that is around it. I just want to go higher and higher. I want to achieve the best I can do in my career. Definitely. But you know what I was going to say? Hit on it. Basketball is a team event and high jump yeah. is not. <laughs> so... It's but, totally two different things, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I played 13 years basketball. Um, actually, what I miss in track and field is the team part. Because yeah. I think it's amazing to have a team in your back. It's, of course, it's wonderful when you win because you win. You have won. You, 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 do, you know what you have, you have done for achieve that result. But in the same moment, when you win as a team, there is that kind of feeling that everybody is feeling that everybody is happy in the same way and 10 people happy in the same way that the it make the happiness like 100% more that's that, that's why I'm telling you in the Olympic game when we share the gold medal me and Mutaz we were happy both in the same way and that happiness is much bigger than when you are alone and that's why that's I'm true. very very happy that that happened that's it but the funny thing is for me what made me really laugh is that when you won that gold medal you was looking over and someone won the gold medal in 100 meters and you run over there, it's like you forgot <laughs> your gold medal and you were celebrating with um, <laughs> the Olympic yeah. champion. I didn't, for, yeah. I didn't forgot the gold medal. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Didn't forget. Like that. But it seemed like because it was yeah, there, yeah, yeah. you was like, I got you. you know, yeah. yeah. So, so what I, is it? It in, impressed in, me. I was, I was like in, in, the other, in another world because I was waiting for that day so long and when I won, of course, I was like this and then I see... This man Marcel coming in the under meters yeah, Marcel, and win yeah. the under say, What what is going on? What what what's <laughs> yeah. happening tonight? But what it's I want to know because it's very surprising. But you know, the 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 events, the high jump, hundred meters, four by one relay, a great anchor leg. Um, what's happening in the Italian athletics? It sounds like a, it's a new generation, a new era. So actually, I hope that's the answer. I really hope that's the answer. We didn't expect it. I'm honest with okay. you. I was looking okay. to myself. And of course, that was my goal. Probably I was the, the only one close to that medal before the Olympic game. Because in the last seven years, I'm in the big circuit. I'm in the World, Cha World Championship finals every, every year. I'm, I'm there, let's say like this. So the Federation was expecting me to do something, but nobody was expecting for the relay or the under meters and so on. So who knows? Maybe it was just our day. Maybe, yeah. maybe it will be our future. I don't know. I really hope because I'm the captain of this team and I'm so proud of them, but not because of the result, but the way we were cheering Approach. for each other. It was amazing. Definitely. It was amazing. Yeah, our, our, the stadium was empty. The only part full was for, of the Italian people cheering for us. Us, as athletes, was, were going in the stadium for cheer for our teammates, and that pushed us, you know. It was like in the NCAA college game, you know, in the championship. They there, and they do 
a lot. They cheer a lot, and we did the same. And I think that pushed us a lot. I mean, for me, they pushed me a lot, and they they, they was mm. they were my teammates. That that's why I'm yeah. still, I'm really proud of them because it's a very yeah. big team right now. It's it's a good team. Definitely. So, did you feel the pressure of your country? You were the closest to the gold medal. You know, it was all on your shoulders. Maybe to lead up to it, and they knew there's a good chance of you winning the gold. Did you feel that pressure? Uh, no, actually, no. Uh, when I when I came into the stadium, it's strange because I'm when I compete, I'm very like straight with myself. I'm very hard, and when I came inside the stadium in Tokyo. I start laughing, I start smiling because I say to myself, you couldn't even do nothing more than what you did in the five, in the last five years to be better in a better shape today. You couldn't do nothing more than this. I was in the perfect body fat, body fat condition. I was in perfect technical condition, I was perfect mentally, I was perfect physically. I never missed a training. I never I never choose something else than I jump. I sacrifice everything for being there in the best shape ever. So I, st- I, I remember I walk inside the stadium and I start smiling and say, today is my day. It can't be different. It's my day. And uh, it, it's an amazing feeling because you feel your pressure goes away. You're not, you don't have any pressure anymore because you know every single thing you have to, uh, to, to do, you did it, everything. And that's that's why I love that. That is brilliant because you know sometimes that's what I used to do. I've got to be bigger than the moment. You know, if you're not bigger than the moment, the moment's going to be bigger than you. So think of it: the Olympic yeah. Games, your mindset, and you yeah. called it. My, it's my day today. Four years, yeah. five years, it could be ten years preparation to lead to the Olympic Games. What lasts less than, let's say, three hours competition. Mm-hmm. And it, regardless of all what you've done in the past. That was a good indication that this is going to be your day. But it's amazing that you took it. So it didn't even matter how you, you felt on that day. You knew you'd done the work because you could have woke yeah. up with a headache, a backache. But you called it that today is my day. Yeah. And, I, you know, I commend you for that. And this is why I say the mindset is very important. Mindset. And that's what I say from your career. I like the way you perform, the way you conduct yourself, the energy, the respect that I can see, the camaraderie that you have with all the other um, you know, high jumpers and, and people in different events. And it's great for us seeing outside, and especially for me as being a high jumper, you know, you and know. now on the outside being a fan. And I know, yeah, so I love it because before sometimes I was watching it and it wasn't interesting for me. It was, you know, you know boring, you know, but now I, I can see and I love watching. I get excited. I mean, remember when I first met you in Bansu Biskrita, you know, um, 2018, and seeing you come from there. And then I even went, because I was a guest of honor for um, Great Britain team to go to European indoors and seeing you that you won, you know, the gold medal indoors there and you jumped 232 then. So it was nice as well. So it's nice to see you up and close and, and feel part of it there. Yeah. Thank oh. you, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. No, for you as well, I'd just like to say thank you for taking your time out as well. Because where are you? Are you training somewhere in Italy? In your camp, no, you're, right you're now, in I'm, in the, I'm in a training camp very far because in Mauritius Island, I used to come uh, in uh, January or December every single year in South Africa for training camp because it's warm. But South Africa this year, it was impossible to go because of COVID. So I, we chose an yeah. island very close. And I'm training here. It's a good condition. It's nice. It's a nice place. So the facilities is good. Yeah, great. I mean, think of that now. COVID, nobody, nobody in the stadium. You're a person who liked that energy. So how did you handle that then? Because you probably, you could never ever see. The Olympics was postponed as well. It should have been, at, you know, 2020, but it was, you know, 21. So how did you handle with that then, leading up to that? Uh-huh. It's going to be totally different. It's totally different, especially for a night jumper like me who loves to share with the, with the spectators, with the viewers, my competition. I take energy for, from people. So I like to go there and call the club, you know, play with the people who is looking. And I, I really love the energy that the crowd can give you. And it was very hard in 2020, especially in the beginning, understand how to get used to it. But after, yes. uh, after, after, day after day, you understand probably that what you was trying to find outside from the people, 
you all of that you have inside you so you don't need to see people to get that energy there is everything you need oh, oh i broke my cup my bad look at my this bad because this is gonna be good you. luck my john grant academy i do it with balance it's gone it's broken no problem carry on <laughs> <laughs> yeah that could be so i think here. everything you need everything you need is inside you and yes you don't need the people of course i still want to be in a stadium full with the people but if they're not be they will not be there you can find everything inside you thank you well you showed it that you can find everything inside you so on that note a broken cup that was Dalton Grant Academy athleticism in the park because what I do personally it's about you know walking the walk talking the talk there's people on this talk show who's actually been world class sports people business people and it's about their story and it's hopefully that you can take something like from this interview today that can help you in your life so we had the likes of Linda Christie you know Gilberto Silva from Arsenal um you know Sharon Davies the list goes on and this is just for me to go out you see me live on Instagram doing my training program yeah. and training people as well that who don't even want to do sport but it's about their own personal development and do it for your heart you know because your heart is a muscle so on that note thank you so much and taking time out um jamal and you. your family and i hope that you achieve you know all thank you so that much to you and thank you, you to the people to who followed us and keep going with your dream every time guys because even if you are the only one who believe in yourself you still can do it that that's what i think thank, thank you, you so much them. all the best say thank hi to everyone please definitely bye dorton grant academy work ethic mentally strong positive mindset world class foundation elite athletes youth never give up a talented coach meeting talented athletes equals success championing the making no pain no gain bringing new levels to the table learning about the standard as words versus physicality warriors teaching warriors